my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we're going to be talking about Hag Seed by Margaret Atwood. But before we get into that though, I just want to share a quick little anecdote with you. So coming up on Sunday, it'll be my three years on YouTube. I'm going to have a whole video dedicated to that on Monday. But so I'm coming up on three years here on YouTube. And that also equals three years making these book talk videos here on YouTube. The book talk videos are my favorite out of all the videos I film. Um, I love to read and I love to share reading with you guys. And uh, anyway, a few months ago I started tweeting out links to my book talk videos every time they go up. And um, I tag the author in them. Um, not really so much thinking that the author will actually see it, but as a way for people who like that author and might be searching their name on Twitter to find my video. And never has an author, you know, liked it or responded to it or anything like that until this past Friday. This past Friday, I put up my book talk on uh, Watching You by Lisa Jewell, and I tweeted it out. And a couple days later, she liked it, retweeted it, and replied to it. <laughs> Let me show you what she said. She said, wow, Shannon, loved watching that. Thank you so much. Let me show you here. Look at that. So needless to say, I was very excited about that. And I just think that's so cool when someone takes time out of their day to just acknowledge, acknowledge something you did and I appreciated that so much. That's the first time that an author has done that. So thank you, Lisa Jewell. I know you're not watching this, but uh, it just, it meant a lot. Anyway, let's keep this moving. And like I said, Hagseed, Margaret Atwood. Now, believe it or not, I've had this book sitting in my to be read pile for about a year and a half, even though I love Margaret Atwood. She's one of my all-time favorite, most beloved authors. But um, there was just something about it. I kept putting it off and putting it off. I knew that Hagseed was a modern retelling of The Tempest by William Shakespeare, so I was very intrigued by that. But I just kept putting it off. <laughs> but then I found out that not only is it a modern retelling of Shakespeare, it's also one that was commissioned by the publisher Random House as a part of a project called Hogarth Shakespeare, in which a bunch of popular authors were given or chose um, which Shakespeare story they'd like to retell. So for Margaret Atwood, it was The Tempest. Um, Gillian Flynn, who is most, I think, well known for her book Gone Girl, she's going to be doing one in 2021. Margaret Atwood's came out in 2016. I'm looking at the list now and it says other authors participating in the series include Howard Jacobson, Ann Tyler, Jeanette Winterson, Tracy Chevalier, Joe Nesbo, Gillian Flynn, and Edward St. Aubin. So that is so cool, and I think it's really, really interesting. And I really can't wait to read some of the other retellings. So, this book talk's gonna be a little different than some of my other ones in that I'm not gonna go into as much detail as I do normally. Um, if you're new here, normally I go through literally every part of the book, spoilers and all. But for this, where it is a retelling of The Tempest, I'm just kind of going to give you a review, a bit of a overview, and then my thoughts. So, I read a reviewer once describe this as a play inside a play inside a novel, and I thought that was a really interesting way to describe it because it's very true. So the book takes place in modern day, like present day Ontario, and it centers around a man named Felix. And Felix is the theater director of a festival, um, and he's getting ready to put on a production of The Tempest. And he's hoping that it will give him a way to contact his deceased daughter. His daughter died when she was three, and he has not been able to move on or get past it in any way, um, which is understandable. I can't imagine what that would be like. So, his work, Felix, has always been a bit edgy, 
a little bit different, you know. And uh, he's just, uh, he's also set it up so he's going to be the star of the play, uh, Prospero. And uh, he's ready to go. But unfortunately, before the play is ready for opening night, he is unexpectedly fired and replaced by his nemesis. And um, he's just devastated. He's devastated. From there, Felix goes into a, a like over a decade long, I also, I want to say 12 year exile in which he lives kind of in the middle of nowhere um, and he's he's losing it. <laughs> he spends his time talking to the imaginary ghost of his daughter, Miranda. And a theme that comes into play here quite a bit that also comes to play in The Tempest is that Felix is aware of his illusions. Like, he knows his illusions are illusions, but he doesn't care. And he keeps fostering them, fostering them, and spending more time and more time talking to the ghost, the imagined ghost of his daughter, um, even allowing her to age as a ghost in his mind. Uh, and I always think that was one of the um, things that I loved about The Tempest and sort of that theme that of how powerful illusion can be even if you're aware that it's an illusion. I think that's a fun theme to play with. So then after many many years living in solitude Felix comes. It's after that that he gets a job as sort of the literacy head of a prison and it's while he's working there that he decides he's gonna have the prisoners put on various Shakespeare plays and um, he uses that as a way to just kind of um, get back into his love of directing theater. But then soon after Felix faces once again his nemesis Tony uh, coming to just ruin everything once again and he hears that the prison is facing cuts and that his program might be one of the things to get cut. And once he hears the news, he decides that he's going to put on an interactive um, version of The Tempest. And that's kind of going to be his last hurrah with that. If he's going out, he's going out with a bang. And then in this, in this production, it's kind of the real world and the imaginary coming to head. And it's just, it's, it's absolutely wild. And it's written in that very Margaret Atwood way in which it's, it's very, there's a lot of mischief. There's a lot of humor and it's just so much fun to read. I also know that some people might have the opposite reaction to me, whereas I'm intrigued by the idea of Margaret Atwood retelling The Tempest. Maybe you'd be like, oh, I'm actually put off by that idea, but give it a shot. If you love Shakespeare, um, I think you'd love it. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. I was just going through a review here and um, I think this is worded perfectly, so I thought I would share this bit from the review with you. And it says, like the Tempest in Atwood's Hag Seed, one thing is never just one thing. Felix, aka Prospero, is both the victim of one plot and the master manipulator of another. The actors are also prisoners, dangerous but vulnerable. The means of vengeance, the theater, are also the means of forgiveness and grace. Illusion is also truth. Atwood's choice to stage the Tempest in a prison exposes these conflicting roles and the many kinds of imprisonment that the play engages. The play, after all, as she so rightly observes, is about prisons. But here, prisoners are performers. Uh, just as Felix is acting out of his own prison of grief and desire for vengeance, and even though we have been backstage all along watching Felix assemble the tools and mechanisms of his revenge, he hides from us as any good magician would. The, the writing is beautiful. She kind of takes Shakespeare's language and weaves it together with her own and then we're left with something just so sparkling and so beautiful. 
One thing that I really loved too is the title, which is of course Hagseed. And that kind of references in the story when Felix is working with the prisoners. He makes it so that the only curse words they're allowed to say are ones that were used in Shakespearean times, and a hag seed was one of those. So I think that's such a just a fun, interesting thing to throw into the plot that that's the only way they're allowed to swear, because um, my sister and my husband both know I have uh, long been just very amused by Shakespearean insults and curse words. My sister once she even bought me this pack of gum. <laughs> that inside every piece of gum had a new Shakespearean insult listed on the inside and I just got such a kick out of it. So I love that element to the plot. I think it's so creative and so interesting and I love it so much. So there you go, you guys. I would 1000% recommend reading Hagseed. I think it's going to be, honestly, if you're familiar with The Tempest or not, I think there's something for everyone here. And I think anyone could find something enjoyable in the story because it's very much a Margaret Atwood story. Like in your mind as you're reading it, you know it's a retelling of The Tempest and you know, obviously it is, but it's also very much a Margaret Atwood story. Like she's made it so intensely her own that it's just perfect. So whether you're familiar with The Tempest or not, I think you'd love it. Um, if you're a fan of Margaret Atwood and you're a little put off by the fact that it's a Shakespearean retelling, don't be. Like I just said, it's very much a Margaret Atwood book. And um, I just, I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. She's one of the people that I hope I get to meet in my lifetime. And um, she's getting older and it makes me nervous. Uh, but hopefully one day and uh, ever since I was in high school I started reading Margaret Atwood books in high school and um, they've just been very instrumental in my love of reading and I know I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again now but uh, I'm working on a video dedicated to Margaret Atwood and not just you know not just one book but all of her books and um, it's going to be a special video, a very special video to me, one that kind of just um, celebrates her and celebrates her in terms of what she's meant to me. That'll be here probably late spring. So there you go, you guys. Like I said, a little different book talk this week just because I don't want to get into the details too much. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you... I hope you read it. If you have, if you've already read it, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. This time next week is our book club book talk. I am so excited. I finally started The Clockmaker's Daughter last night. Uh, I, I just, I can't wait to dive deeper into it, get more into the story, but already I'm loving it. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys about it next week. So uh, let me know too if you've, if you're reading along with us and uh, if you've started it yet or not. I know a few of you have already mentioned that you've started it. I think one of you, I want to say it was Valerie. I think she already said she finished it. So exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about it next week and to hear your guys' thoughts. I hope you guys have a good weekend. It is still freezing cold here. Of the last 10 school days, for my daughter, eight of them, she hasn't, it's been too cold for school. And none of the buses are running, everything like that. So she's had an extended holiday the past couple of weeks. But <laughs> um, next week it's supposed to warm up. So fingers crossed. Sometimes I don't know if the, if they're just telling us that just to keep, help us keep our sanity. And then when the day actually comes, it's still, it's still cold. So I don't know, I don't know, but crush fingers. Um, Take care, you guys, and I will see you on Monday. Bye.